Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today, I wanted to tie together a couple of the subjects that I've been talking about over the last week, and I wanted to start by talking again about Marvel becoming a lifestyle brand. And just go over really quickly what I had said originally. What I had said originally is that lifestyle branding is a type of marketing, so it doesn't actually have to do with production. It has to do with marketing, and it has to do with marketing towards a very specific subsection of your population. It doesn't actually work on just general population. You you have to have a subset. You have to have a subculture to sell to with lifestyle marketing. And I said that if you look at it and you actually see what they're doing over in Marvel and Disney, that they're not actually, this subsection that they're trying to sell to are not actually comic book buyers. They're actually SJWs. And you can look at my video for that if you want to hear the whole thing about that. But I want to expand on that just a little bit more and say that it's not just SJWs that they're trying to target with this type of thing, but it is also potential SJWs and soft people. And now when I talk about soft people, I would say they're people that they can turn easily. They're people who would fall for things like virtue signaling. Because believe it or not, there's people out there who still en masse fall for things like virtue signaling. They are people who don't know anything really about marketing or the fact that these companies are trying to manipulate them, basically, emotionally manipulate manipulate them. And this is what virtue signaling that um, companies do is actually supposed to be used for and how it actually works. But so I wanted to go uh, over this and look at these soft people and who exactly they are. Because if you look at Marvel's Twitter feed, and if you've looked at it for a while, you know that this announcement that Marvel was becoming a lifestyle brand it was just an announcement. They've been doing this for a while now. And when you look through my video there that I did about their Twitter feed, now you have the movie stuff, and they have the television stuff, and mostly that's what you have on both of their Twitter feeds. But then you have some comic stuff, but you also have a bunch of other things which are targeted towards, I would say, a very specific kind of audience as well. And this would be the soft people. Now, let's try to define who these soft people are. One of those other kinds of advertising was the idiotic lockjaw little cartoon. Now, I do believe that you can only find this kind of cartoon through Twitter right now, and that's how they're trying to market it. So, Obviously, this kind of cartoon is, if you look at it itself, is targeted towards an audience of preschool kids. And you're not going to, of course, have preschool kids choosing off of Twitter what they want to watch. They're not going to be going through Marvel to find this thing on Twitter. So why would they put it on Twitter? That's a question. Now, the other question would be around uh, the school supplies that they were trying, trying to sell. Now, if you're buying a backpack that has Spider-Man on it or the Avengers, you're buying it for your kid. Your kid is not buying it himself, and this kid is going to be fairly young. He's going to be grade one, grade two. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, if you would have it outside of grade two, you'd probably get beaten up. But hey, um, that's the kind of kids that they're marketing to. And it's no longer a world where kids can actually buy comic books anymore. It's not like when I was a kid and you'd haul on your mother's sleeve and say, can I have 25, 50 cents so I can buy this Spider-Man? If a kid did that today, he'd be hauling on his mother's shirt going, hey, can I have $5? to buy this comic book. And the mother would probably look at them and say, no, no, Johnny, you just go back to the corner there for a little while. It's not going to work. The kids don't have money anymore, and Disney's not going to market to them because they don't have money. They don't have the kind of money that they want to milk out of people. So these two, plus I would say if you add in the cooking section for Marvel's Eat the Universe, they're directed towards these soft people. And these soft people, I think, if we look at those two other things, these preschool kids and these school supplies, you're looking at people with kids, of course. So you're looking at parents. They are marketing things, these things towards parents. Now, they don't actually have to tie into the Marvel Universe in any real way, shape, or form. They're marketing to them 
to these parents, to these soft people, and they're trying to turn them towards their brand because, of course, Disney already has their hands tightly around the neck of parents who have little kids who have girls because they have all the Disney princess stuff that's out there all over the place, and so they want to expand this more into boys. But at the same time, you have Son Amanat on, uh, I can't remember what show she was on, saying that Marvel is no longer a boy brand. Now, why would she go on there and say Marvel is no longer a boy brand when it's clearly obvious that Disney is taking Marvel and bought it and is trying to market it specifically so that they can draw in the boys just like they draw in the girls for the Disney princesses? Well, she's saying it's not a boy brand because she's not actually talking to boys. And most people would say, well, she's trying to exclude men in the male from any kind of comic book buying or kind of comic book fandom. Now, I'm not saying that we exclude that. That's probably there as well. But I think that what she is actually doing with this also includes the fact that they're talking to these soft people, these parents. They want to say to these parents, look, your little boy and your little girl can enjoy this. You can buy these things for both of them. And I think that that's what that announcement was to, in a great extent, what it was meant to do, to speak to these people, to speak to these parents, to say, hey, you can buy this both for your boy and your girl, so you should just go with that instead of any kind of thing that uh, is specifically targeted towards, towards boys or girls. So you can just buy this Marvel stuff and you can get it both for one. I think that's what that was. So you also look at these things that they are putting out for marketing. And if you look at, I just looked at Captain Marvel. And if you look at the kind of stories, the, the Life of Captain Marvel comic book that came out recently, and I did a, well, it wasn't a review. It was an autopsy because I was picking the bones of this carcass to see why and what had killed it before it even got to the shelves. But if you look at those kinds of stories... Someone had made a great comment saying that it was basically, what do they call it, like a Hallmark movie. You know, it's a chick flick. That's what it was. And when I did my little autopsy of it, I said, when look at all this art. It's not comic book hero art in any way. It's, it's not a comic. It's not a, a product for showing comic book art. It's basically a photo album for soccer moms and old women. That's what it was. Because that's the kind of people who go through other people's photo albums. So it really seems to me like these soft people that they are targeting are mostly women. Now, I'm not calling women soft. I'm just saying that they are soft people in so much as they're targeting people that they can, they view as people that they can turn easily. And there is, I would say, a very specific, again, reason why they're doing this. And this is a marketing reason why they're doing this. Because if you look at Disney's other kinds of, we'll call them companies, but they're almost industries, they want people who are uncritical. They want people like happy cows going through their turnstiles and buying their products because their kids are pulling on their sleeves and want a Mickey Mouse hat or T-shirt or figurine or whatever. And so they just want these people to rope them in. And these people are looking at these products in an uncritical way. And so they want an uncritical audience. And that's why I would say is another clue why they would be targeting women. Now, I'm going to say this and I'll, I'll, you'll have to listen to the whole argument though, because women are directed by their emotions a lot more than men. And that's not just me talking, that's actually science talking. They've done some uh, experiments, even recently they've redone, redone these experiments with tiny little kids when, they're, when their vision starts to come into focus and they can actually see things because they can't actually see things when they're first born. And they put in front of little boys and girls a picture, two pictures, one picture of a human face and one picture of a mechanical thing. And the boys would tend towards looking at the mechanical thing with a girl would tend towards the human face and when you it just showed that from the very beginning from when they were tiny little kids and they first learned how to see 
little girls are more attracted to, towards human interaction. Little boys are more attracted to mechanical things and mechanical interactions. And when you're dealing with human interaction, of course, you're dealing with a lot more emotion than you're going to get out of a carburetor or any other kind of mechanical thing like, I don't know, your computer or things like that. You're not going to get emotion out of that. You're going to get emotion out of the human face. So women tend towards the emotional. And if you tend towards the emotional, they're also tending towards non-critical. Because when you have critical, you have to usually have reason and logic and that kinds of things, which are all divvied up and sectioned out into very mechanical definitions and ways of looking at the world. It is extremely mechanical, if you want to put it that way. It's very, very subsectioned up and you got to know this part goes here and this part goes here and this part goes there. And that's the way it works. And so women are typically much less critical. And this, I think, is that soft audience that Disney is trying to target. I think they're trying to target women especially, but they are in targeting women, especially because you're looking at Captain Marvel and you can see again, that Hallmark movie coming out there. And you look at all these things which are for parents. And again, usually the mother is going to be the one that's going to buy the school supplies. And usually the mother is going to the one that says to the little kid, Hey, why don't you watch this? Usually that's what's going to happen. But it is an indicator that they're trying again to get a non-critical audience. They're trying to get all of these people who are like me, and I'm sure like you, who want a universe and a Marvel universe where you actually have rules and everybody obeys the rules and set rules. And if they break them, you got to do a retcon. You got to figure out something that actually puts it back together. No, they don't want any of those people anymore because that takes a whole lot of work. And they just want Marvel Comics to be like Walt Disney is usually. They want it to be like a Mickey Mouse cartoon. They want it to be like a DuckTales cartoon. It makes no sense. And that's why when you see Diversity in Comics, Richard Meyer over there doing um, his reviews of comics and is always saying, well, nothing makes any sense in Marvel anymore. No, it doesn't make any sense. They break the rules all the time. They don't care because they don't want critical people as their audience. And why I'm saying this, why I'm doing this and actually ranting a little bit about this is because we need to be critical. Not to be emotionally critical, not to be critical in a way of we just want to destroy, but we need to be constructively critical. We need to have constructive criticism. You need to have critical thinking. You need to think about things and why they are this way, and that's how you can make them better. Because my whole thing about why I'm trying to do these videos is I want to share ideas so that we can understand better what the problem is with our comics, and so we can use that to try to make them better. All right, so again, I've gone about two minutes over my time here. Usually I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes now. So if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit subscribe. That subscribe is that little shield at the bottom on the bottom left, no, right-hand side. Every time you get to the end of a video, you use people that actually get to the end. Um, and... Give me something new to think about. Leave a comment. That would be great. Go over to my Twitter page and you can retweet all of my videos from there because I always post them there. I'll post them there for everybody to see. So that's it for today. I'll see you later. Bye.